Alright, so once again, um, welcome back to our discussion and this is going to be our class uh, art appreciation class and today what we're going to talk about is the different functions and philosophical perspective on art. So when we talk about functions first, so let's go ahead and do this uh, one by one, starting out with the function. But before that, let me uh, give to you first some different objectives no, of our lesson. So by the end of this lesson, you guys should be able to what? Distinguish between... Uh, directly functional and indirectly functional art, explain and discuss basic philosophical perspectives on art, realize the function of some art forms in daily life, and apply concepts and theories on beauty and aesthetics in real life scenarios. So that's going to be the whole coverage of our discussion this afternoon. So basically in everyday living, even though we're just staying in our house, we're just staying in our room, every material there, everything that you see there, and, um, any tangible things that you see there, it actually has purpose. And when we say purpose, it's actually the function of the things that you see every day. Not only every day, but the things that you get to use every day to make your life easier. So Aristotle talked about this. He claimed you know, that everything or every creation in this world, be it uh, be it a living thing or be it a non-living thing, it all has the what we call telos. Now, what is telos? Telos is actually a Greek word which actually translates into purpose. Now, according to Aristotle, he said that everything, no, every living thing, every every living and non-living thing in the world, no, uh, actually has a purpose, uh, a function, or what we call telos. No, uh, just like a seed, a small seed, it actually has to, it, it needs actually to grow into an actual plant. Like a baby, it has to, it has to grow actually into a, uh, an adult man or a woman. So just like what Aristotle said, if you would look into it as a reference on, on, on what or how function is actually being defined. So we can easily understand that uh, a function is actually the purpose of one creation or one substance or one particular substance here in this earth. So further discussion or further examples of, of TELUS or the what we call function is we have there in your uh, a PowerPoint presentation, no? TELUS, the TELUS and function of a thing are both related to a thing's identity. So what makes a table is the fact that it does perform its functions and thereby reaching its TELUS. So it's like the end, it's it's the purpose, it's the goal of, of, of something, no? Just like, uh, how we are being created, no? If we're going to believe on, on, on the theory of creation, no? On the Bible side, uh, we're actually created by God. And then, if we're going to talk about science, so we actually uh, an evolved, no? An evolved animal, no? We are the rational animal. So we are actually created because we have we have to serve our own purpose, our 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 individual purpose. So when one sees a kitchen appliance at a department store, one tries to know first what functions the appliances has. It's 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 easy. No, if if you if you really wanted to understand what is tell us or what is function or what is purpose is is is, is all about. If we are trying to buy, let's say, a mobile phone, so in, in, in when buying a mobile phone, we are actually looking for its function first or its capabilities, its specs. Because it's, it's, it's something that we want to achieve on the things that we want to buy. So if, if, if that specific uh, um, substance or material was able to, or, or you were able to utilize its purpose or its functions, nor its, its, its uh, capabilities, therefore, that specific substance or that specific material is actually achieving its tell us. The same thing goes with art. We create art for a certain purpose or for a certain telos. So it's actually the gist or the main idea of our discussion this afternoon. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about it one by one, no? the functions of arts. So basically, we do have a lot of functions. We do actually have a lot of art functions here. So starting out with the motivated or the functional arts. So when we say functional arts, it's something that we do, something that we need to work on. So example of which is architecture. Architecture is an art. Weaving is an art. Or in Filipino, yung paghahabi. Or furniture making, it's it's an art. It's still an art. And and everything that these things, no architecture, weaving, and furniture making, um, it, it does create 
something new from the materials that you that 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 an artist actually obtain and thus by making another material no it it's it serves its purpose or its goal so the number two function of art is the what we call the non motivated or the non functional example of which is painting uh, another one is sculpture, literature, music, and theater arts. It's it's not something that we can use every day. Aside, uh, um, if functional, no, the the product or the the output of the functional art is for us to use it every day. That's why it's called functional because it really functions. No, the non-functional is just there for us to 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 be inspired. No, to 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 uh, ease our burden no it's it's something that it's not that, that we cannot really use no or that we we cannot really manipulate in order for, in order for it to serve its function okay so you also have the what we call personal function of art so art are vehicles for the artist's expression of their feelings and ideas yes we already know that the art also serve as the means of expression for us Yes, again, we already know that. The therapeutic value of music cannot be ignored. Yes, some people actually find music as their way of comforting themselves or, or a means of, um, of, of moving on you know, after a failed relationship and whatnot. So it's, it's therapeutic value. You know? it, it's something that we really cannot ignore because it's, it's there. It's, 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 it's one of its purpose. And, and music is also an art. So works of art makes us aware of other ways of thinking, feeling, and imagining that have never occurred to us before. So sometimes if we get to, to watch a movie, we, we can easily be affected by, by, uh, by what's happening on, on, on the antagonist and the protagonist. Um, sometimes when we hear a very sad music or a very sad song, we tend to, to, to get sad as well. So... Again, these are the functions, or these are these these functions are somewhat very personal because it really touches our 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 feelings, our imaginations, no, our, our, it it affects our ways of thinking or our, our uh, how we think and something like that. So it's it's called personal function. Now, when we talk about social functions, it's something that one cannot achieve a society without art. For art is closely related to every aspect of social life. So let me just correct that. When we say social functions, no, a society cannot uh, cannot really uh, prosper without art because it's like what we have discussed um, last week or the previous week. We keep on saying or we, I keep on telling you guys that art is everywhere. Everywhere we go, even that's just in your room, it's in your bathroom, it's in your comfort room, it's in lavatory if you're inside an airplane or anywhere, art is present. So serving its purpose in the society, you know, like entertaining us, inspiring us, affects our, our, our ways of thinking, is what we call social functions. Now, Art also performs a social function or it performs a social function when, number one, it influences social behavior. Like what? It seeks or tends to influence collective behavior of people. So one example of these are the flash mobs. No, So some people are doing it like, I don't know if all of you guys are aware what is a flash mob. Flash mob is actually a dance no? um, uh, that is actually performed by a lot of people in a certain place. So by, by, by doing some flash mobs, people are actually uh, engaged to, to, to really see and, and to be curious about what they are doing no? because they don't know what they're going to do. Uh, the people who are going to be watching, they don't have an idea of what they're going to do. Therefore, it's affecting their behavior as well. They're, they're, they're making themselves or they're, they're, they're making themselves um curious so it affects their way of thinking and their behavior as well their surprise and and and, and amaze and whatnot so it really changes their behavior number two art performs a social function when it display and celebration so it is created to be seen or used in public situation like what a singing contest or or a concert or a fiesta, no? Every time that we have a fiesta here in Santa Fe, we actually have uh, uh, a benefit dance or a ball dance or be it a pageant. 
be it a singing competition, be it a dance competition. It's 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 a way of us displaying and celebrating life and celebrating art. And 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 with the help of art, actually, it makes the celebration a lot more meaningful. So basically, art performs its social function when number one, it influences social behavior, and number two, it display and celebration. All right, now aside from the social function, we also have the physical function. So what are the physical functions? So if by looking by looking on, on the words itself, when we say physical, it's something that we need to perform no? or something that we need to uh, touch no? or perform, really perform, do some action. All right, so tools and containers are objects which functions to make our lives physically comfortable. Yes, that's actually the, the telos of, or the telos sorry, the telos of, of the tools no? to make our lives easier. Functional works of art may be classified as either tools or containers. So it could be a screwdriver or it could be um, a simple glass no? that, that, you, that, you're, that you're using every time that you drink water. So these are the, these are actually the, what we call the physical functions. So let's say for example, this, okay. This ball pen, yes, this ball pen. This is actually uh, a creation of art. No, it's it's a physical art because we, we say physical art because it's we, we can touch it. It's, it's something that is tangible. So it's a tool. Now, uh, what does the ball pen actually do to us? We use it for writing, to write our notes, to write our, our exams, to write uh, a memo or a message. So it's it it helps our lives easier. Another example is the comb. All right, to make us more guapo and guapa. So we need to, we actually need this uh, comb. We can also use this to scratch our backs. We can only use this to scratch our body if it's somehow itching, All right? So it when we, when we say physical function, it's, it's actually more uh, uh, connected into the tools and, 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 and uh, uh, the technologies that we're using, no? that, that we use every day no? to make our lives easier. All right, so now we're done with the function. Now we're going to move on to the philosophical perspective on art, starting out with art as an imitation. So most artists nowadays, not, uh, 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 writers, painters, sculpturists, uh, the one who does the drawings, and, and every artist, um, they drew inspiration you know, to, some cre uh, to some arts that are already present or created by some artists. And sometimes they tend to imitate. So according to Plato in his work, The Republic, he uh, paints a picture of artists as an imitator and art as a mere imitation. So when we say imitation, uh, it's more of it's more of a uh, uh, it's more of an inspiration no? uh, in, in, in creating the whole art. So in his description of the ideal republic, Plato advises against the inclusion of art as a subject in the curriculum and the banning of artists in the republic. So that's according to Plato. But again, in his work in Metaphysics or View of Reality, the things in this world are only copies of the original, the eternal, and the true entities that can only be found in the world of forms. For example, the chair that one sits on, or the chair that I'm sitting on right now, is not really a chair, or it's, uh, it's, it's not a real chair. It's an imperfect copy of the perfect chair in the world of forms. So that's his belief, no, Plato. So everything that we see now are just, uh, are just mere imitations on his world of forms or reality. Okay. So Plato was then convinced that artists merely reinforce the belief in copies and discourage men to reach for their real entities in the world of form. So according to Plato, there's actually two, word, uh, two worlds. Number one is the Republic, where everything is just an imitation from the world of forms. So that's according to Plato, okay? So Plato was deeply suspicious of arts and artists for two reasons. So he actually questioned them. He was uh, very suspicious, you know, of, 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 of the arts and, and, and the artists. Number one reason is that they appeal to the emotion rather than to the rational faculty of men. Now, when we say the rational faculty of men, it's our ability to think, you know. In a way, being rational is, is, is the only thing that separates us or differs or differentiates us or separates us 
from uh, brute animals or this animals, no? Because we are the highest form of animals according to science and according to law, uh, to, 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 to ethics and, and philosophy as well. We are the highest form, we are the rational form of animals because we have this ability to think and to decide. So, uh, according to Plato, that's why he's very suspicious about the arts and, and, and the artists, no? They appeal more on the emotional, right? If we would think of it, every time that we hear a sad music or a happy music, no, it, it, it really affects our emotion. Every time that we see someone dancing a, 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 a K-pop song, we tend, to, we tend to actually imitate them as well, no? Follow the steps. They imitate rather than to lead to reality. So there are two reasons why actually... Plato, no, the great philosopher uh, Plato, actually questioned nor are being suspicious for arts and artists because number one, uh, it, it, it appeal more onto the emotion and rather than to our, uh, our ability to think or the faculty or the rational faculty of men. So why emotion? Because it's not something that cannot be proven. Okay, and number two, they imitate rather than lead one to reality. So why imitate if you can provide a real representation, a, a, a real copy of, of, of the actual object? So that's according to Plato. So poetry rouses emotions and feelings, thus clouds rationality in people. Every time uh, there, there was even a saying, no, uh, don't decide... Uh, if or uh, don't make an important decision if you're sad, if you're angry, uh, angry because it really it would really affect or cloud your wise judgment or wise decision. Okay, so don't actually do that. Art is just an imitation of imitation. Okay, a painting is just an imitation of nature. Yes, no, we cannot just simply put nature in the whole nature in just a small canvas, right. So it's just an imitation of nature. We are giving them just a representation of the whole scene or the whole or the real scenario. A painting is just an imitation of nature, which is also just an imitation of reality in the world of forms. So again, that's according to Plato. All right. Art is then to be banished alongside the practitioners so that the attitudes and actions of the members of the Republic will not be corrupted by the influence of the art. But I believe that's not the case. No, uh, um, um, the masterpieces of our fa of famous painters and sculptors are are uh, from 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 the yesteryears are uh, present even up to this day. For Plato, art is dangerous because it provides a pretty replacement for the real entities that can only be attained through reason. So, in Filipino, hirap nilang intindihin na, no? dami nilang sinasabi. Uh, pag, pag sobrang matalino talaga, mahirap sila i-comprehend. So according to Plato, art is dangerous because it provides a pretty replacement for the real entity. So para siyang, ano, in, 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 in sci-fi movies, para siyang clone. <laughs> and, and, and most of the movies right now about clones are, uh, the end is not really, well, not really good. No. So that's according to Plato. Alright? Art as an imitation. Now there's another... Uh, um, view or another uh, principle no? or perspective of what an art is. Art as a representation. So that is what I mentioned earlier. Imitation is the actual copy. No? You imitate everything like parroting. So another one is art as a representation. So Aristotle agreed with Plato. So we have two great minds now. So we have Aristotle and Plato. So Aristotle agreed that uh, uh, agreed with Plato that art is a form of imitation. However, no, according to Aristotle, he considered art as an aid to philosophy in revealing the truth. The kind of imitation that art that does is not arithmetical to the reaching of the fundamental truth of the word. When we say arithmetica. I don't know what these guys are actually thinking about what an art is, no? Uh, but according to Aristotle, he said that this is a kind of imitation, no? Art. But it does not uh, reach our arithmetical. It doesn't need the mathematical things, mathematical conversions, math math uh, mathematical solution or arithmetical solutions to reaching the fundamental truth in the world, Wow. So unlike Plato, who thought art is an imitation of another imitation, 
So that's what Plato said earlier. No? Uh, imitation of another imitation. Aristotle conceived art as a representing or art as representing possible version of reality. So, maiba lang ng konti kay Plato. So, so, so kung si Plato sanaba niya, it's, it's, it's just uh, an imitation of another imitation. So, para siyang copycat from, it's, it's a copycat from a copycat. Aristotle said that it's a representation from the possible version of reality. So, it's like uh, uh, a different reality. For Aristotle, all kinds of art do not aim to represent reality as it is. It endeavors to provide a version of what might be or the myriad possibilities of reality. So, according to, to Aristotle, it's just a, a representation of what a certain reality would look like. So, let's say, for example, you have drawn something. Uh, you have drawn a, uh, uh, a people dancing no? a people, or, or, or the nature itself. Uh, when, when you do your art, no, of course you get the inspiration or when you're making your art, you're getting the inspiration of it from the things that you see all around you, be it on, on be it nature. So if, if, if we are going to understand really what Aristotle is trying to talk about or trying to tell us here, art as a representation, he's just wanted, he just wanted to tell us that art now or the artwork no, that we are going to do if we're going to draw a, 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 a nature is, is that it presents or it gives us this understanding of what is the possibility of the real the real nature would look like no so that is what uh, aristotle would want us to know that art is just a representation of the actual reality not an imitation from the imitation although he agreed with plato but he just made his own idea and he said that yes it may be an imitation but it's just a representation of the reality so, in the Aristotelian worldview, art serves two particular purposes. So, if, if it's for Plato, he, he is actually suspicious. So, Aristotle now, or Aristotle now, then here serves two particular purposes. Now, art serves two particular purposes. Number one, it allows for the experience of pleasure. Horrible experience can be made an object of humor. Mm. It can be an experience that allows for, for, for us to experience pleasure and, and, and happiness. No? And number two, art also has an ability to instructive and teach its audience things about life. Yes, I would agree. So it's cognitive. When you say cognitive, it's inside our brain or inside our mind. So yeah, I, I may have to agree with this one. Because sometimes that if, 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 if you're actually watching a movie in a form of art, if you're actually uh in the museum um checking on 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 paintings or the last supper or anything like that it somehow teaches us no be it about life be it about um uh your philosophy anything it it it, it would really teach if you, if you would just allow yourself to dig deeper into the actual concept of of that specific artwork so again According to Aristotle, we have two purposes no, of art. Number one, it allows us to experience pleasure, to, to, to ease our burden. And number two, it allows or it, uh, it has an ability to be instructive or, be, or to become a teacher or an instructor. Because it teaches something or teaches us something about life. Alright, so we're done with art as an imitation, art as a representation. And number three, and the last one is art as a disinterested judgment. So when you say disinterested, not interested. Okay? So the 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 philosopher that we have here is we have Immanuel Kant. Alright, so again, art as a uh, a disinterested judgment. So we have Immanuel Kant here. Immanuel Kant. In his critique of judgment, it's actually his work, critique of judgment. He considered the judgment of beauty the cornerstone of art, as something that can be universal despite of its subjectivity. We already know that art is subjective sometimes and it can also be objective. Now, when we say subjective, because uh, the, 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 the interpretation, it uh, really depends no, on, on uh, the actual, uh, not just the artist, but also the audience. No? Uh, the, the interpretation of the artist might be different from what the the actual audience actually perceive so that's why it's subjective so according to Immanuel Kant no 
from his book, Critique of Judgment, he considered that the judgment of beauty, uh, the cornerstone of art, anyway, art we, we considered as beauty, no? As something that can be universal despite its subjectivity. So we, according to Immanuel Kant, we're just, we just have the same uh, 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 interpretation of, of, of beauty, despite, no? despite of the fact that it is subjective, can't recognize that judgment is of, of beauty is subjective. However, even subjective judgment are based on some universal criterion for said judgment. That's why we have the criteria for judging. No, it, that's why every pageant or every competition there is a uh, there is a what we call criteria for judging. No, because every one of us has uh, actually have our own no uh, interpretation or definition of beauty. To, to some beautiful might be someone who is short and uh, short, big nose and big eyes. So it's really all up to them. Okay? And in, in, in some cultures as well, you know, every people is unique or every culture is unique. That's, that's, that's the thing that you have to bear in mind every day. That every culture, every, pe every living person in this world is unique. So therefore, they have their own uh, criterion or criteria for what beauty is, okay, or how how uh, they perceive beauty. So, according to Immanuel Kant, how and in what sense can a judgment of beauty, which ordinarily is considered to be subjective feeling, be cons uh, be considered objective or universal? So that's actually the the, the challenge, no, the challenge of 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 Immanuel Kant as an art as a disinterested judgment because i don't know some people would actually find uh an abstract art as something that is very beautiful but for me it's not no abstract art for me is something that is very confusing i really find it really difficult to understand what the artist would actually try to to tell me or to to present no on his uh work of art so Art as a disinterest, uh, disinterested judgment, the question that you have to remember here is how and in what sense can a judgment of beauty, which is ordinarily is considered to be subjective feeling, be conserve, uh, considered objective or universal? Okay. And next one we have, I thought we only have three, we actually have four. So art as a communication of emotion. So it's, it's if you would, if you would, um, if you'd actually... Uh, uh, think of our previous discussion here. Uh, I always mention to you guys that uh, art no, appeals really more into our emotion and feeling. So according to Leo Tolstoy, another great philosopher, art plays a huge role in communication to its audience's emotion that the artist previously experienced. So I don't know guys if you're watching interviews of some artists or singers or composers you know about how they were able to compose uh, to compose their songs and whatnot so they sometimes they said that it uh, they just had uh, uh, a, bro uh, a breakup or they just had a very sad experience that, that's why they were able to come up or to, to write a very a very sad song so again it, it appeals really into our emotions it communicates the emotion of the artist to its audience like just like the just like the the composer of the song or the singer of the song to its listener so in the same language it communicates information to other people art communicates in uh sorry art communicates emotions so it it, it the artists are actually letting us feel you no know, uh his emotion if he's sad through his artwork he also felt sad if he's happy through his artwork or through his uh, masterpiece, we felt happy. Okay, so art as a communication of emotion. So we have different people. Art as an imitation, we have Plato. Art as a representation, we have Aristotle. Art as a, uh, a disinterested judgment, we have their Immanuel Kant. Art as a communication of emotion, we have your Leo Tolstoy. Okay. Mm -hmm. As a purveyor of man's innermost feelings and thought, art is given a unique opportunity to serve as a mechanism for social unity. Yes, no, 
um, R has been doing that for for uh, a longer period of time now. No, it 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 actually unites the the, the whole society or the community. No, art is a set, uh, art is central to man's existence because it makes accessible feelings and emotions of people from past and present. Yes, no, even though the the actual composer of 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 the famous uh, uh, musics, no, or musicians, no, that, that 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 are still present up to this day, it it still affects our emotions and our feelings. So, uh, what I'm trying to say here is that even though they're dead, no, the actual artists are dead. Uh, the 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 uh, the purpose of art, no, which is to communicate uh, emotion, is still present or still in exists. Then. All right, so that's actually it. If you have any questions, you can actually um, just comment down your questions. Or while we're having our discussion, you can actually type in your questions there. And just a quick recap, or just a quick recap, just a quick reminder for all of you guys, no, if uh, to those who are not yet able to submit their activities, no, please check on the PowerPoint presentation. I believe the deadline of that uh, is actually this Friday. So make sure that you guys are able to, uh, to submit that before Friday. And also we have an assignment. No, look around your house and identify a product of art in a short bond paper. Paste the picture of that product of art in your house. So trace the beginning of this item and identify what function it has in history. Painting of the last supper in the dining room or a spoon. Be creative. Use your uh, imagination. All right, and 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 submit that on Friday. So again, thank you all very much for joining me here today. And be safe, everyone. And good luck on your midterms exam. Bye.